Welcome back, you gorgeous weirdos. I'm so glad you're here. Look at my index nail. I can't believe how well it grew out. We are ready to go for a dip on natural nails, and we're going to play a little game today. The game is going to be, um, do I know how to dip? Because I have not done a dip manicure on my own nails since before Thanksgiving, which is crazy, but... We're, we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes this is the color i'm gonna use it's uh number 30 from model ones it's a like cover nude color i'm also gonna use model ones black number what is it 15 yeah 15 um i've used that black a bunch of times before it's a fabulous black dip powder probably my favorite to date i'm gonna start with my peel off base coat though because i don't know what kind of a train wreck this is gonna turn into and i don't want that kind of commitment <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I, I Again, I have not done a proper dip powder manicure on my own nails when it feels like forever. And if you're anything like me, I mean, I know muscle memory is a thing and I'm sure everything's going to be okay, but I was a little nervous having not done dip nails in over a month, almost a month and a half. I, I, that's a long time for me. I mean, y'all know if you've been around for a minute, I've been dipping my own nails and I've been on YouTube for uh, almost five years at this point. So to go a month and a half without doing dip on my natural nails is just so foreign. I've been loving my press on nail journey. So if you love that too, don't worry. I will make sure to keep making press on nail content along with natural nail content, depending of course on how this all shakes out. Um, but we're gonna have a good mix of content coming up for the rest of 2024 the rest of we just started <laughs> it's still it's still january anyways i'm gonna get the peel off base coat on i use unt it's my favorite peel off base coat i do see a lot of questions um in my comment section in my facebook group in instagram wherever on peel off base coat peel off base coat is intended for quick turnaround it is meant for swatchers really so unless you are planning on getting only a day, maybe two out of a manicure, you're not going to want to use this. You're going to want to skip that, prep your natural nails the way you normally would, and do not use peel off base coat. I'm going to have some of my iced coffee while I sit here waiting for that to dry. Fast forward to about 10 minutes later, we are now completely dry, good to go. Oh my God, you guys want to hear something crazy? I ran out of orange wood sticks. Didn't even realize that I was short on orange wood sticks, but alas, <laughs> I went to grab one today to realize that I had no more. So I'm going to use this teeny tiny dotting tool as an orange wood stick, and I don't know how that's going to go either. This is shaking, this is shaping up to be a huge train wreck. I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm terrified. So uh, we're off to a rocket start. I've already flooded my sidewalls with dip base coat. It is a fresh bottle of dip base coat. So it probably, the brush probably held onto a little more liquid than I'm used to. And that, that can happen, especially if you are starting out, especially if it's a brand new bottle of product, I just applied way too much. But as you're gonna see, this actually turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So spoiler alert, I still know how to dip and I'm so happy about it because I was terrified. I'm gonna go in with this beautiful cover nude color on two nails. One of them will be an accent nail later on. Later, okay, wait. If you have been wanting to do like a plaid kind of manicure or if you want line work, but you do not have a steady hand, you don't have access to some really good nail art brushes, I have the perfect hack for you. Y'all just wait. This is gonna be so super duper easy. I can't wait to show you this nifty little hack. It's by no means anything new, but I've been playing around with it and I love it, so stick around. It's the no nail art, nail art I'm gonna show you. You cannot you cannot mess this up, I got you. So I'm gonna dust away all the excess from the first dip, and I'm gonna go in with my second dip. This is all gonna be real time. I am not editing this, I'm not speeding this up. What you're seeing is what actually happens. There is nothing cut out of this footage. No retakes, no redos, nothing. This is all real time. So I'm gonna go in with coat number two on those two nails. Um, my dip process is the same. I make sure that I'm not overloading my brush with product. You can always add more, but if you put too much on the nail, you're going to have flooding issues. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but my nail is also pointed slightly down, hanging off the rim of that dip jar. 
I feel like gravity helps you out a little bit with flooding. If your nail is pointed down, the odds of you flooding your cuticle area is pretty slim, so I like to just angle my finger down a little bit just to prevent anything flooding to the back of my nail because that could be a pain in the ass to clean up later. I do start the brush down in the center of the nail, pull the bulk of the product down to the free edge, and then I'll go back and get into that um, cuticle area in the back of the nail. That's my MO. I just feel like that helps me to prevent against flooding and have a really clean application. I feel like getting your application, not I don't want to say perfected because perfection is an illusion. It doesn't exist, but as good as you can will really help cut down on your filing later. And if you're anything like me, I don't like to file. I used to. I used to be a file fanatic. I don't know what happened. Something changed, something shifted, but I just, I don't want to take that much time. I don't have the patience. I have other things to do. I want to get my nails done and get it over with <laughs> and finished and move on to the next thing. So if you can really hone in on your application process, it is going to make everything fly so much quicker. Cut down on your filing time, which also can cut down on your hand and wrist fatigue because I know that's a thing too, especially if you're spending hours doing your nails. The fatigue in your hand and your wrist is real. So try to get your application technique down. Practice on swatches if you can. That way you're not, you know, constantly having to soak off your natural nails because that can cause nail damage, which is another controversial topic that we can talk about. I've had a lot of people ask if acetone can damage your nails. And the answer is yes and no. I'm just doing a layer of clear over the color. It's just a stronger acrylic powder. It helps protect the color when you're filing and buffing. I like doing clear over colors, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So I'm gonna do clear, but back to, to um, what the hell was I even talking about? <laughs> Total brain fart, lost my thought. Acetone, that's what we were talking about. Okay, <laughs> does acetone damage your nails? So acetone doesn't directly damage your nails. What it does is it dehydrates your nails. It is great when you're doing prep work because it does a good job of getting all those oils off of your nail plate, which will help prevent against lifting. Fabulous, good stuff. But because the acetone can be so dehydrating and drying, it can cause your nails to become brittle or peel, and that is what is going to cause the nail damage. So does it damage your nails? not directly, like it's not going to eat your nail away, but it can cause nail issues, which can lead to nail damage. So you want to minimize your acetone exposure as much as possible. Make sure that you're constantly hydrating your nails after you're done doing what you're doing. Cuticle oil is great for that. I use cuticle oil numerous times a day. I'm going to go ahead real quick and just activate those two nails. That way when I'm done with the other three nails, the, these two are ready to file. So I don't have to sit and wait because I have no patience for literally anything these days. Anyways, back to acetone. So I just find that minimizing the amount of acetone that you're using, especially during soak offs and minimizing the time it takes to soak off is kind of key to prevent acetone from causing nail damage. Makes sense? Makes sense. So this black dip powder, is it dip powder? Is it acrylic? It's all the same thing. Uh, mostly. <laughs> I'm going to go in with this black dip powder. And I know that a lot of you have concerns about dip powder staining. And I find that there are two main components to prevent against dip powder color staining. One, use a color that doesn't stain. This black is fabulous. It's perfectly opaque in two coats. It will look a little bit sheer on the first, but it's very buildable and I only need two dips of it. So that's great. It doesn't stain my skin at all. But again, going back to your application, getting your application, I don't want, again, perfected. I hate that word, but let's, for argument's sake, let's call it perfected. Getting your application perfected is what's really going to help. As you just saw, I tend to balance my hand that, because my hands are shaky. I'm a shaky hand girl. I, I, I'm bad about caffeine and food. Like my mornings, I can't eat in the morning. I cannot eat in the morning. It'll make me nauseous, but I have to have my coffee, right? So in the morning hours, I'm caffeinated, but I haven't eaten yet, which makes me super duper shaky. And that's usually when I want to work. So yay for me. So stabilize your hand as best as you can. I use my pinky to kind of stabilize my right hand. I'm always leaning my wrists on my nail desk. So I'm as stable as possible. And that is one of the ways that I kind of 
honed my application process by making sure everything is very stable, making sure that I'm not floating my hands up in the air trying to do this because that is just not going to work well, not for me at least, but also again, liquid control. I know, I, I know I'm a broken record. I've said this a million and a half times, but liquid control is really so important. Knowing how much your brush holds, putting down only the amount of product you need, not flooding your cuticles or your sidewalls. If you do, you can always go in and pick anything out that you need to before everything starts to dry down. Again, I wish I had my orange wood sticks, but I don't. So I'm using a teeny tiny little dotting tool. You can use a toothpick if that's what you have around your house. If you need a place to find all of these things, um, down below in my description box, I will have all the products I'm using linked, but I also have all of my Amazon storefronts linked down below. I've organized them into different departments. So if you need stuff for dip powder essentials, if you're beginning with dip powder, you don't know where to start, you don't know what to buy, I have a whole storefront dedicated to just beginner essentials for dip powder. So definitely check that out. Um, I am an Amazon affiliate. If you do use any of my links or shop through my storefront, I do make a small commission at no cost to you. So if that's a route you want to go, I super appreciate that. You're helping me pay my bills. You're helping me feed my cats and my kids, which I always appreciate. But if you don't want to do that, you super don't have to. Um, everything will be linked down below and I'll leave the um, names of all the products so you can totally search them anywhere you want if that's the route you want to go to. I don't gatekeep anything. All the secrets that I have gathered for the last five-ish years on doing my own nails, I will always be open and 100% honest with you guys. You don't have to pay for anything. As most of you already know, I do not do like the YouTube memberships. I don't do YouTube subscriptions. I will never ask you for anything <laughs> ever. <laughs> okay, that's not what we do here. What we do here is help each other learn, help each other cope with everyday life through the nail art therapy route. <laughs> that's all we do. Um, also my Facebook group, if you have not joined my Facebook group and you're interested, I'll give you a little info about that. I'm just gonna do my second coat of black and then I'm gonna dip into clear just so you guys know what I'm doing. Yes, this is a chatty video. I have been in a chatty mood lately. I don't know why. I'm sorry if you think I talk too much. I've gotten some comments. <laughs> I talk too much. Okay, well, don't listen. I don't know, you could put me on mute. I don't really care. Anyways, my Facebook group. Um, it's an amazing place. And I know I'm biased because it's my group, but I, I do a, a really good job, I think, of making sure that it is completely ad free. No one there will ever try to sell you anything. Nothing on the feed is an ad. It is merely a place for you to get some nail inspo, get some nail advice, post your stuff, ask questions, talk to other members of the community about struggles that you may have or joys that you may have. It's a very, very supportive group. And the people in the group range anywhere from newbies who have never done nails before to seasoned professionals that have been in the business for over 25 years. So it is a great resource if that is something you feel like you need in your life. Again, no one will ever ask you for anything. There is no money exchanged anywhere <laughs> in the Marla Chris dip universe. <laughs> I promise you that. So I'm going to go in with the clear over this black. And I know that it's kind of scary and intimidating, especially over a dark color to put clear. And I know the clear dip powder thing has been an issue for a lot of people. It can look cloudy or grainy or speckly or bubbly at the end of your manicure. But I have been using the Model 1's clear acrylic for seemingly forever and it has never done me wrong as you are going to see in the finished result and I think that's because of two things one very very finely milled acrylic powder it is so fine to the point where it absorbs into my dip liquids at rocket speed and I have to dip into it a couple of times just to make sure there are no wet spots like look at my pinky nail already it just absorbs so beautifully and it's okay. You can go in and double dip. You can triple dip if you have to, which I am likely going to do. And then once it dries, well, not completely dries, but once it's set down, so you're not going to mush things up if you brush off excess, I'm going to go in with my stiff scrubby brush. It's a stiff manicure brush, kind of like you would see at a nail salon when they make you go wash your hands. And I use that to remove any excess clear. 
and these nails are clear. You will see at the end of this video just how clear they really are. How many times have I said clear? Please don't take shots. So I'm gonna let this dry for a second and then I'm gonna scrub off the excess clear. I'm gonna activate and then I'll show you a little bit of how I file because those two nails that I did first, they're gonna be ready to go. So here's where I'm going to bust out the scrubby nail brush and just get off all of that excess clear dip powder from those black nails because I want to make sure, as mentioned, these are clear as possible. I don't want any specks or bubbles or granules making the finished look of my nail look anything less than flawless black color. So now that I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and activate those two black nails. Those are going to need to sit for a little bit, but while those are activating and setting down or curing, as you can call it, I'm going to go ahead and start to file the two um, neutrally nudie, I don't know, is off-white pink, maybe? It's a beautiful color. I'm going to start filing those because those are ready to go. If you are new to doing dip powder nails, and you're not sure when the nails are ready to file, here's a little test for you. Listen to this sound the nails will make. That is the sound you're looking for when it comes to getting ready to file. So I'm gonna take this very slim wooden nail file. I get them on Amazon, they're super cheap. And I'm just going to clean up first the cuticle line just to make sure it's super smooth and there are no weird edges like popping out of there. You wanna make sure that's very smooth, very rounded. It's gonna give you that salon look. Then I'm gonna go around and just crisp up the sidewalls and the free edge, make sure everything is nice and even. Now, because I have really perfected my application, all I need to do is go in with a buffing block over top and the nails will be ready to go. If you need to do a little more contouring or filing to the top of your nail, you totally can. I would recommend a finer grit file. I would use a 150 or a 180 grit. Um, the, high, the higher the number, the softer the file. If you're using a rough nail file, you're going to take away product. You're going to have weird indents in your nail. I just prefer a softer file for dip powder because the layers are pretty thin. But again, they're your nails. You do with them with what you wish. I'm Yoda again. Why am I always Yoda? Anyways, I'm going to go over with a buffing block, then I'll do the rest of the nails off camera. And when I come back, I'm going to show you how to do the plaid look, and you're not going to believe how easy this is. So I found these stickers on Amazon. These are stickers. They are not striping tape and they're so easy to use. I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to take with my tweezer a little bit of the thickest line. I'm going to snip it off and I'm just going to apply this to the nail. I have nothing tacky on my nail. I just buffed and wiped them off to get all the excess dust off nothing tacky there is no primer there is no gel base coat there is nothing on my nail and these stick so well to a dry non-sticky nail it's ridiculous and you can pick them up and replace them as many times as you want before you are happy with it i'm just going to apply a little bit of pressure in that cuticle area and the the the, the sticker just snaps off like it's so it's fragile but not that fragile but it's just it's so easy to manipulate and use and cut and then I'm going to take the smallest or thinnest line clip a little bit off of that 
and I'm going to apply that right kind of on top of, not on top of the actual line, but above. There we go, above. Do I know words? Above that first sticker. And it's gonna give you that kind of layered plaid look. After I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the white stickers. And we're gonna do a little overlappy plaid-ish type look. And it just adds such a classy element to this manicure. I mean, the black and the white or the off-white nudie color are beautiful together anyway, but I feel like these stickers just do something different. And they do not look like stickers. This looks like nail art. This looks like you painted it on with a nail art brush. It looks like you have the steadiest hand in the whole wide world. And if you're wondering if there is a texture on the nail, I'm going to top coat. You'll see me do that. And you can tell a little bit, especially where those two stickers overlap. There's a little bit of texture on the nail, but it's so slight. It's really insignificant. I'm going to flip my hand upside down after I top coat because that'll pull that top coat even across the surface of the nail, like gravity help it out a little bit to minimize that texture. So you really don't even notice that it's there. If that's a concern of yours, you can always double top coat or go in with base coat first and then top coat over that. And that'll eliminate the texture, but it's really nothing significant. You can't even tell from looking at it. You just have to wait and see the finished look. I'm going to finish up the nail stickers. I will get the top coat on and then I'll come back and I'll show you what this looks like finished. So here is the finished look. I could not be more happy and obsessed with this manicure. And holy crap, I still know how to dip. I even impressed myself with this one. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for spending some of your day with me today. I so appreciate it. I hope the rest of your day is as beautiful as you are. And I will catch you in the next one. Love you. Bye.